In a previous video, I had showed how a commodity tax of $1 collected from the sellers causes both the buyers and the sellers to experience a burden of the tax. In this particular example, the consumers experienced a burden of 65 cents and producers of 35 cents. The question that we now ask is this. Would the distribution of burden between the producer and the consumer be any different if the legal incidence of the tax had been on the buyers? That is, the government had collected the $1 tax from the consumers rather than the producers. The answer is that there would be no difference. It is an important and startling conclusion of economic theory that legal incidence of a tax does not determine the actual incidence of that tax. In other words, the distribution of burden of tax between consumers and producers is not determined by who the tax is collected from. To demonstrate this, I'm going to clean up this diagram from the previous video that had demonstrated the effect of tax collected from sellers. The only thing that I'm going to leave is the tax wedge from that analysis and the prices corresponding to the top end and bottom end of the tax wedge. I will also note down the equilibrium price before the tax was imposed because that was the price that was paid by the consumers and received by the producers. Now let's begin our analysis of the impact of $1 tax that is collected from buyers rather than sellers. How would that affect our diagram here? Hmm. The consumers must now pay $1 to the government every time they buy an apple. That adds to their cost of buying apples. Consequently, the demand for apples will decrease and the demand curve will shift to the left. In fact, in this case, we can tell by exactly how much the demand curve will shift. The demand curve will shift such that the difference in the height of the new and the old demand curve will be equal to exactly one dollar. Why is that? Recall that the height of the demand curve at any quantity tells us the maximum price that consumers are willing to pay to the producers. Because now consumers have to pay one dollar to the government, the maximum price that they are willing to pay to the producers decreases by one dollar to, well, exactly one dollar. If the consumers actually insist on paying the producers one dollar less than before at the old equilibrium quantity of 700, then it will lead to a shortage because at the low price of one dollar, the quantity supplied is less than 700. Equilibrium will only be established at a price greater than one dollar where the new demand curve intersects the supply curve. That seems to be the price of $1.65 and a quantity of 500. Now how do we know that the new equilibrium price is exactly $1.65? Note that the new equilibrium is at the bottom end of the tax wedge. And we know from previous exercise when we analyze the tax collected from producers that the bottom end of the tax wedge corresponds to a price of $1.65. Therefore, the price that sellers will now receive will be $1.65, which is 35 cents length, less than the price they received before the tax, and therefore 35 cents will be their burden of the tax. What net price will the buyers pay? Well, they paid the equilibrium price of $1.65 to the sellers. But in addition, they must pay $1 tax to the government as the tax is now collected from them. So the net price that they pay is $1.65 plus $1, which is $2.65. 
and that is 65 cents more than the price that they had received before the tax and therefore 65 cents is their burden of the tax. Now this is the moment of the truth. Recall that this was the burden of taxation in the previous example as well when the tax was collected from the seller rather than the buyer. How about that, huh? This surprising result has powerful implications for public policy. Policymakers often talk about how we need to tax businesses more and individuals less. The economic analysis here shows that it doesn't matter. Individuals are going to end up with the same burden of tax whether they write the check to the government or the businesses they are buying from are the ones writing the check to the government. Note that the tax wedge that we had kept from our analysis of tax when the tax was on sellers is now useful here as well because it provides all the information about the impact of tax collected from the buyer. Here too, the position of the tax wedge on the x-axis tells us the quantity sold after the tax. The top end of the wedge tells us the price that buyers pay after the tax. The bottom uh, end of the tax wedge tells us the price that sellers receive after the tax. The top part, the top length of the wedge tells us the consumer's burden of the tax. The bottom part tells us the producer's burden from the tax. So if we are not told whether a commodity tax is imposed on the buyer or the seller, but merely shown this tax wedge, we can obtain all the information that we need. We don't even need to shift the curve.